I will give the floor now uh, to Fernando. Fernando, are you there? Uh, I'm here right now. Uh, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. So while you're putting your slides, so Fernando will be talking about this lab double lens te uh, technique that I, I presented at the very beginning. I would like to read his biography. So he received the master's degree and the PhD with a major in radio frequency and propagation engineering from the Carlos III University in Madrid, Spain in 2014 and 2017 respectively. And from 2018 and 2019, he was a postdoctoral researcher with the electromagnetic compatibility group of the Universidad Nacional de Colombia in Bogota, in Colombia. And he received the Young Scientist Award from the URC uh, last year. So he's currently working here with us as, as a lead researcher in, 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 I mean, in the Directed Energy Research Center in Abu Dhabi. And his present research in, in interests include ultra wideband antennas dielectric lenses for false high power electromagnetic radiators, frequency selective surfaces for IMI applications and pulse forming networks for HPM sources. So Fernando, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nicolas. Uh, thank you, the steering committee for inviting me today. Uh, I just want to uh, talk to you. Ah, can you see my screen, the full screen? Yes, it's the full screen. Good. Uh, Today I'm going to present to you uh, a work in which, uh, in which I'm involved in the last uh, uh, few months. Uh, I worked to, as Nicholas said, to the electromagnetic effects and also collaboration with Electromagnetic Radiator Radiators Group uh, in the Directed Energy Research Center. And this is uh, the concept of a dual graded index dielectric lens system uh, as an applicator for hyperthermia. Hyperthermia, especially in the focused in the um, uh, cancer treatment. Well, uh, this is the agenda for my talk today. First, a general words on what is hyperthermia, the baseline and techniques for hyperthermia from the antenna propagation point of view, of course, which is my major. Uh, graded index uh, lens basics is gonna be like an introductory to this type of uh, dielectric lenses. And then I will explain to you um, the baseline of the dual lens applicator we are proposing, some uh, preliminary results and future work. <clears throat> well, motivation, some facts uh, about cancer. Breast cancer is the most commonly occurring cancer in women. Uh, Millions of people uh, are diagnosed every year. I just put in here some numbers, uh, over 2 million were new cases worldwide in 2018. Uh, thousands of, uh, of new cases of cancer are diagnosed every year. Uh, not only in the, these are just number from the US, uh, but of course worldwide. Uh, so this is, I think, the motivation from the uh, uh, wealth, welfare point of view uh, for this work. Well, so some definition of, about hyperthermia. Hyperthermia is a complementary treatment strategy uh, for cancer, complementary in the sense that it is uh, utilized uh, besides uh, uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Therapy. Um, the main idea is just to stress the cancer cells by exposing them to a higher temperature, higher than the, the 37 uh, degrees Celsius of the human being, uh, to induce a lack of oxygen in them. Uh, as I said, it's a complementary treatment. It can be implemented by magnetic induction, induction electric or electric field, like a, a magnetic or electric storage of energy, or by ultrasound, or directly by uh, application of microwave radiation from a constant wave or pulsed uh, power source. Uh, it can be uh, apply, uh, applied to malign tissues also uh, just uh, close to the skin, but also there are um, some techniques to apply the hyperthermia deep in, into the body. The main challenge from the microwave radiation point of view is the high uh, amount of losses the human body has due to the high content of, of salts, salts and water. Um, also the healthy tissue is stressed once we apply the hyperthermia, but uh, let's say that healthy tissue will recover uh, faster than the malign tissue. Uh, 
Another important challenge is the difficulty in focusing the microwave beam, the microwave energy into a localized spot inside the body. I think this is uh, the most difficult problem to tackle when an engineer uh, is gonna design uh, an applicator for hyperthermia. Uh, this is just to summarize uh, the methods and techniques uh, for, for, for applying hyperthermia in, into the body. So there are three methods, three ways of, uh, of application, the local hyperthermia, the regional hyper hyperthermia, and the whole body hyperthermia. The first two are applied um, for, for early stages in, in the cancer, and the whole body is applied uh, when the metastasis has happened. So this, uh, this whole body is applied into, in the way of, uh, of uh, uh, heating chambers for the whole body. So uh, from the electromagnetic microwave point of view, we will, uh, we will work in applicators for the external hyperthermia uh, in the local branch and from the deep uh, multiple external regional. So uh, I have added this uh, classification as a non-invasive and invasive um, application. So intraluminal and interstitial uh, consists of applying needles or probes inside the, the, the human body to, uh, as Professor, as, uh, one presenter, earlier uh, uh, showed so like, the idea in here in these cases is to apply directly in very specific spots uh, electric uh, fields very intensive and short in duration and the non-invasive is by using applicators external to the, the human body uh, the, the deep tissue the multiple external is exactly the same as the external but using more than one applicator the perfusion, per, sorry, the perfusion and peritoneal perfusion uh, is even more invasive because the idea here is taking out the blood and pumping again into the body, applying some chemical anti-cancer uh, medicine and also heating up the blood. So the hyperthermia in this case is, is applied using the blood itself of the patient. So as I said before, we are gonna work uh, in this uh, concept I'm gonna present today in this uh, region, the non-invasive applicator. Well, these are some examples of these external non-invasive uh, hyperthermia applicators. This is just a, a few examples of a lot of work published uh, in the last uh, decades. Uh, for example, in this case, you can see a, a conventional waveguide used an, as, as an applicator. So this waveguide is gonna be uh, swept in, in the space mechanically uh, to induce a hot spot inside. In this case, this is a breast phantom. Uh, cured antennas, in this case, printed antenna, also are turned or are physically, physically uh, uh, moved around the, the phantom of the human being. In this case, I think this is also a, a breast phantom. The same case of a uh, Vivaldi uh, antenna, right? So, uh, uh, for, and also a dipolar right, this is a, a commercial equipment. In all of these cases, uh, electromagnetic waves of different frequencies are applied around the, the body. Uh, and the idea is to, to make a physical sweep, uh, a movement of the applicator to induce the heat inside the body. Well, uh, now, let me introduce you to the graded index lens basics, so uh, which give us an idea of what we are gonna propose later. Well, uh, dielectric lens uh, is a lens, so we want to focus the energy. Uh, in this case, on the left, you can see uh, this is a, a method proposed by Professor Baum many years ago, in which. Uh, we can go from a divergent uh, front wave, a spherical wave from, sorry, and by designing a dielectric uh, uh, lens, in this case, a, a single uh, material dielectric lens, we can focus or we can obtain a zero phase wave front on the opposite side of, from the lens. Uh, there are many, many variations uh, going from the spherical, to a more convergent or going from a front wave to a front uh, 
plane wave from sorry to a convergent uh, uh, wave. Um, this picture in the center is just an implementation of this idea from Professor Baum. So what we have in here is just a transverse electromagnetic transmission line that propagates an spherical TEM uh, wave uh, that illuminates the left side of this lens. It's a dielectric lens with a permittivity of 2.2. And on the other side, in the minus uh, set axis, we can obtain a plane wave front, so a zero phase difference um, uh, wave front. Uh, but at the expense of uh, having a massive lens, first uh, drawback, and second, the uh, the surface in here is very, very uh, is, uh, not easy to implement. So let's say that this is an exotic uh, shape, so physically it works, uh, but it's not easy to implement. There are on a, another option to implement this type of uh, uh, zero wave, uh, zero uh, phase difference wave front, which is the Leon group lens. Uh, can be understood like a multi layer, like an onion, uh, array of uh, dielectric material with different permittivities. Uh, with uh, using this lens, we can not only uh, focus the energy like a, a zero phase wave front. Uh, but also we can, by just uh, moving it in the Y axis here, we can focus the beam. These are only two examples of what a dielectric lens looks like. Well, we were aimed uh, at uh, having this play wave front in the beginning uh, uh, the, to, to focus the energy coming from this uh, TEM wave front uh, you saw. Uh, in fact, we proposed a, a type of dielectric lens, a graded index for an impulse radiating antenna. And here I, I'm going to uh, explain to you the same principle, uh, but in the other way around. So here we have we will have a plane wavefront, and we want to focus on a focal point on the other side of the lens. So the graded index flat uh, phase dielectric lens is nothing that uh, much that, uh, than um, an array of concept, concentric rings whose uh, dielectric uh, constant or relative permittivity is going uh, is going to change from a high point a high value in the center to a low value in the outer part and with this we can implement a different uh, time of traveling uh, travel time inside the lens itself of this play wavefront so for all the trajectories of this play wa plane wavefront, we will uh, add an, a, a different um, uh, delay. So that's why I call this the, the equal time equation. Uh, in the equal time equation, I'm taking care of what is the time, the ray uh, in any point uh, mapped in any point of this phase of the lens uh, will take to reach the, the focal point. As you can see the, the permittivity in the central part. So this is the upper, the transversal view of the upper part. So this is the axis of the lens. Uh, we, the lens will, will have a higher uh, permittivity or dielectric constant in this point. As we move to the edge, the, the dielectric constant will decrease. So it's going to take less time for a ray to, to pass through the lens and to reach the focal point than uh, the ray path from the axis point. So that is the basic of this approach of one single uh, flat uh, index, uh, flat phase graded index dielectric lens. So by solving this very simple equation, we can extract an expression for the permittivity uh, alongside the y axis in this case. So uh, I'm going to extract, uh, synthesize a, a function of the permittivity. Uh, this function of the permittivity is this blue curve in here. Um, since we are looking for a simple method of implementing this in the laboratory, so we need to uh, discretize this function. So that's why we use this um, step function. So we can discretize and using the central points of each uh, of each uh, discretized steps of this uh, function. In the x axis in here, you will see the distance from the center of the of the of the axis of the lens. And as you can see, the maximum as a designer, I can I can decide what is the maximum of this permittivity. And this maximum value is going to be in the center uh, ring of my lens. 
the lower ones are going to be uh, as we move to the to the outer edge. Oh, this was first proposed for for um, as an alternative to the reflector parabolic reflector in an impulse radiating antenna. But as I said before, we can use the other way around. Instead of converting from a divergent uh, spherical wave to a plane wave, uh, plane wave front. So we are going to convert a plane wave front into a convergent um, a way. So this is just an animation. Uh, well, here I have I have added uh, I, I didn't mention sorry uh, the the left the right side of this uh, um, domain is a tissue. It's a phantom of a tissue in which I have put uh, some uh, losses and some conductivity and some permittivity as per uh, previous work published. So the idea is applying a plane wave. So I think the speed is too is too high. By applying a plane wave, I can. Uh, make the, the plane wave to converge into a point. In this case, the focal point is located when the, my laser, laser point is located. So I have an enhancement in the field, an electric field in this case, in volts per meter. So this is the physical uh, um, principle of the baseline of a single rated index lens. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how to implement this uh, control permittivity material. This is a work uh, made by our colleagues in collaboration in the Royal University Bochum in Germany. So the concept is just uh, to, to add single um, high permittivity um, dopants or, or inclusion particles to a host low permittivity material, in this case, uh, silicon potent. So once we mix very carefully the two materials, uh, we can pour it into molds and we can curate it in an oven so I can implement different permittivity materials. Uh, there are some constraints, of course, uh, the, the thickness of uh, the material itself, the time of curation, uh, and also the, the wavelength uh, as a function of the, the, the size of the particles. But for hyperthermia applications in which we are looking for um, uh, penetration levels, high penetration levels, so the frequency is going to be uh, low, so uh, this this constraint is not going to be a problem. This is just part of the published work from the Royal University, as I mentioned. So they have managed to to make uh, samples of the material. Uh, the PTFE, uh, this uh, Teflon is just uh, for for a benchmark. So they started with the silicon potent with the zero inclusions. Uh, the inclusions in this case are uh, barium tintinate, which has a very high permittivity. And they managed uh, to compute, uh, to synthesize uh, material uh, with different permittivities and also with low, uh, not very low and not very competitive uh, losses, but still are applicable to, for example, hyperthermia. Uh, they have uh, extracted some uh, mixing equation that give us uh, an idea of the relative permittivity as a function of the concentration of the, the in this case, the barium tintinate uh, in the potent uh, host material. Well, those that was uh, just uh, the introduction of what is the idea under, under behind the graded index dielectric lens. So let's go into what is the idea with the applicator based of a uh, dielectric lens uh, system. Here, let's start for uh the the main one of the, the main constraints we have in hyperthermia is the high amount of losses we have in the human tissue so what we are proposing here is to uh, add an additional lens to the uh, to this um, uh, system and keep one of the lens lens number one just uh, in the in the skin um, boundary of the of the human tissue and the lens number two is going to move. By, move the, by moving the lens number two, and considering that this lens, I'm showing again uh, the transversal cut and the upper part of the transversal cut of these two lenses. So imagine that everything that is uh, above this set uh, uh, axis is going to be, of course, beneath it. Well, so the idea is going from a plane wavefront by using this graded index dielectric lens and converting it uh, to a more convergent way, not as convergent as the second one, and convert, converting then the, convert, the second 
the second wave into a more convergent one. So lens number two is going to have the focal length f2 in here. Lens number one is going to have the uh, focal length f1 in this case. And the effective focal length is going to be the result of the combination of two. By using exactly the same approach as I showed to you for the single lens case, we can take care of all the, the, the transit times, having the, the square root of the permittivity as the uh, constant of proportionality of this transit, transit time. So by computing it and multiplying for all the distance uh, that the ray path is going to pass through, we can, uh, we can extract the expressions for the permittivity. So I'm on one side of the equation, I have the transit time for all the values for alpha different to zero, different from zero, and on the other side from for, from alpha equals to zero. So which is the travel, the transit time in the axis set. So with these two expressions, I can design separately the two lenses. So lens number one is going to have uh, the function epsilon one, uh, and the lens number two epsilon two, and also the permittivity the complex permittivity or the, the, the losses in, in the human tissue can be accounted for using this, uh, this uh, the, an approximation in, in power series of uh, the function for the, the losses. Uh, tangent delta is uh, the, the loss tangent of the human tissue. Uh, well, this is an animation of the principle I just explained. Uh, and here I'm using the approximation of the of an ideal. This is an applet. It's a public applet. So I'm using the same. Um, um, sorry, in this case, it's two thin lenses, ideal ones, and the focal length of the, the, the lens number one, which is fixed in here. So imagine that the rule area in here, this is square, is the human tissue. I, I, I fix one of the lenses, and the lens number two is going to change the distance. And as you can see, the effective focal length can be changed inside the human tissue. So in a natural way, I can uh, focus the energy. In this case, it's an ideal uh, beam of light. I can focus in different points inside the tissue. While applying this, oh, this is a simulation, um, a full wave simulation of, uh, of an example of an applicator. Uh, in this case, I, I have separated them five centimeters, I have the lens number one, you can see this is a transversal cut, the axis in this case is in, in this area, and you can see in, in both planes, in the X set and in the Y set planes, that we are effectively uh, focusing and enhancing the electric field. Uh, is Y polarized in this case, so the electric field is like tangent to the screen in this first case, and is orthogonal to the screen in this second case. Both cases, we can see the field enhancement side. <clears throat> uh, we conducted a, a sweep in the separation between the two lenses, and we found out that we can effectively uh, change the pulse, uh, sorry, the power loss density. Power loss density is directly uh, related to the specific absorption rate and also to uh, to the uh, the rising temperature inside the tissue. So we computed it, in this case it's normalized, and we find out that we can uh, somehow move the maximum in the power uh, loss density. In this case, it was, in this example, extracted and computed at 2.4 gigahertz. So it was, uh, I, I, we applied a plane, plane wing from, from the left, and then we compute the power loss density in along this set axis. So you can see these distances uh, in this set axis inside the breast phantom. Uh, we used uh, this uh, published uh, in previously published uh, values for the conductivity and for the permittivity inside the phantom. Oh, this is the same, but just for one case, the pulse, uh, the, sorry, the power loss density uh, for a separation, we can see the hot spot in watts per meter is normalized to zero. So this is the maximum value. Uh, we can calculate the rise in, in temperature, uh, having, the, the, having the, the value of the, the conductivity. One important fact in here is that uh, no lossy material have been added in this simulation. So as we might know, uh, the, the, the malling tissue uh, 
usually has a, a higher conductivity value. So the higher the conductivity value, the higher the power I'm dissipating in that area. In this case, I'm not adding, we are not adding any spot, any high conductivity spot, which means that only this hotspot is only due to the lens system, which is uh, good news. Well, I, uh, I just wanted to, to show to you a, a very quick uh, um, simulation of uh, multiphysics simulation of what is the expected rise in temperature uh, from a specific applicator. So I selected this because it's very, it was very convenient uh, for the system, uh, a simple uh, circular waveguide working at uh, 900 megahertz. And uh, we excited it with one watt signal, constant wave, and using the healthy tissue phantom in this case, because, uh, well, we can make a, a very detailed phantom in this case, but I just wanted to double check the, the working principle uh, as a proof of concept. So I used the, the thermophysical values of a gland, the, the gland, the mammal gland is uh, the most part in the breast uh, tissue, the most, uh, uh, yes, the, the most the material that uh, uh, keeps the most volume in, in, the, in the breast. So <clears throat> we can see that an um, increase in about 2.1 Kelvin is expected for just one watt, which tell us that uh, give us one, uh, uh, the principle of the, the dual lenses uh, is promising. Of course, we need to work uh, more future, as a future work I will mention in the frequency of the application. So we need to conduct experiments to see what is the deepest, um, the deepest uh, insertion uh, yeah, depth that we can reach at each frequency using a specific uh, application and a constant wave. Well, so as a conclusion, we have presented the double lens application, applicator as an alternative for hyperthermia. Uh, it can be integrated to other microwave applicator sources. As I showed to you, we can select a home antenna or a waveguide in different shapes uh, to integrate this system. A more complete model of the human tissue, of course, is welcome. We can add this and we can fabricate the phantom to make the measurement. So no high conductivity tissue has been used in this simulation. The same is going to be uh, conducted in our first experiments. Um, as a future work, we need to, we are in the process of fabricating our first prototype. And of course, we are going to publish the results as soon as we have, we can. Uh, and a future work, of course, an adaption to existing microwave source and also a uh, study in the polarization of, uh, of the source. We need to see how deep we can go as a function of the polarization. Some references are available. Um, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Fernando. Very, very nice presentation. So we, we have uh, two questions right now from Dave. So the, the first one is, um, the focal point cannot be a point, but a sphere related to the wavelength of the microwaves. Please uh, comment. Mm. A sphere related to the to the wavelength. Well, so uh, yeah, yeah, we can we can check it as you can see. The hotspot is just the power. Uh, but if we look at the at the animation, yeah, we had, we don't have a, a hot spot. We have a hot pre, uh, a region. Uh, so in this case, I just uh, do the boundaries, ideal boundaries, and just uh, conduct the 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 simulation. So we are looking for a a, a spot with higher power loss density. So that's what we are looking for in this space. Um, the second one is I. OK, I'll read it loud for, for uh, the others. I'm not sure whether they can read it. So I have read it is preferable to inject metallic nanoparticles in the cancer tissue before applying microwaves to reduce the intensity and reduce destroying healthy tissues. Please comment. Uh, like well, you prepare the tissue before, before applying yeah. the therapy. Yeah, yeah. So well. Again, as we are looking for increasing the, the power loss density in the tissue, uh, 
metallic nanoparticles are more than welcome because in the metallic, the metal has a super high conductivity as compared with water or the or the, the healthy tissue. So uh, that is welcome. And this uh, applicator will work better in that sense. Uh, but of course, as I said before, we are looking for a non-invasive uh, applicator. So, well, yes, we can combine this applicator to an invasive technique to, in to enhance the, the, the performance. Yeah, yes, welcome. Well, there is another question by David Rodriguez. So thanks for the presentation. How important is the alignment of the lens and how could it affect a non-perfect attachment between the second one and the tissues? Well, that's a good question. Uh, at higher, higher frequencies, so it's, it's, a, it's a point. So if you don't align very well, so you won't have uh, this nice uh, this nice enhancement in the field, but at this low frequency, I'm talking about low frequencies because the wavelength, for example, at 2.4 gigahertz, is compared to the diameter of the applicator. I didn't mention, sorry about that, it's 30 centimeters and at 2.4 gigahertz, we have a wavelength of 12 centimeters, it's comparable. So if you don't align very well these two lenses and this low frequency is not going to be uh, a big issue, I think. Okay, uh, Fernando, I, I do have another question. I, I was wondering, probably I already know the answer, but uh, what would be the effect if you work with uh, tissues, uh, let's say that have a frequency dependence permittivity, uh, fr frequency dependent permittivity. Uh, at, at the end, you're, you're always concentrating in a single frequency. You have shown works at 2.4 gigahertz and, and 900 megahertz. So my yeah. question is, I, I would believe that for a frequency dependent tissue, every time you change the frequency, you will require a, a different type of lens. Is that correct? Or the idea is to make a broad uh, lens, pair of lenses that could work at several frequencies? Uh, well, yeah, it, it does change. So the effective uh, focal point or focal area, focal region I, I talk about is based on both the permittivity and also the, the, the losses. So since the human body has a lot of uh, salts and water is dispersed at different frequencies, we will have different conductivities and permittivities. So to be uh, pragmatic, we cannot change for every single frequency the, the set of applicators. But what we can do in the near future is having a testing a set of them. And for those frequencies at which we have deepest and highest uh, temperature response, we can keep them as a benchmark and uh, like an, an experimental experimental way to, to select the, the good amount of, uh, the, the good set of, of lenses. But yeah, as you claim, it, was, it will change. So what will change? The, the, the thickness of the lens. The thickness of the lens is directly proportional to losses inside as with the equation I showed before. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have a, a final, another question. Um, probably there is not, not an answer for that one. So if I look back to your plots, one can see that there are some hot spots of fields uh, at a given focal point, but there are still other regions of the tissue that are getting an important amount of field, like in the range of millivolts per meter, probably compared, compared to the 3.5 volts per meter. So I would say 10 times less field so my question is, I saw at some point that you were trying to excite a wavelength with a one, one watt of power. Uh, so the, the, the question is, would you be exposing also other tissues to, let's say, a certain extent of power that could also lead to an increase of temperature? So you, you know what I mean? Uh, you're, yes. you're probably giving the maximum to the, let's say, the focal point, but there are still other parts of the body that are also being exposed. Wouldn't that be a problem of that therapy? Uh, sure. Sure, and that's a side effect of hyperthermia. Um, well, it's side effect, so we have, yeah, we have to focus the best, the better we can do is using this case, uh, a small applicator. In this case, it's 30 centimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, as you could see, there are another regional applica region applicators in which they use several antennas. So that, uh, that side effect is gonna be worse than in here, but yeah. Side effects is we will heat up a healthy tissue. Yeah, so probably a solution could be to increase the frequency so that you get yeah. less. 
okay but less but also less penetration yeah yeah it's a it's a trade-off always um, there were other questions uh, left there um uh, i would like you probably you could check those uh, in felix tried to answer a couple of them it was related to the maxwell garnet uh, approximation for the effective permittivity um and i mean i will just uh, let's say close your presentation now by thanking you again. Uh, I think this is a very nice uh, paper. Uh, so for also, uh, I mean, for those who don't know, so Fernando was awarded. Uh, uh, I think it was a Young Scientist Award in university last year, thanks to this presentation. Is, is that correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank so you thank you very much. much.